Hi, I have something exciting for you today. It is going to be the four quadrants of consumer desire. Now, this is going to be one of these those videos where I just kind of go off on the whiteboard and I'm so excited about it. And I think this is an incredibly valuable, revolutionary concept. And I also never know, like when I have one of these concepts come up in my mind, how much people are going to grab onto it and how um, how popular of a concept it's going to be. So here I go. I'm just I, I can tell you that this is something like a connection was made in my brain this morning and this got me really excited. And so I wanted to share it with you and I hope that it gets you just as excited too. Now, my name is Roy Fur. This is a video issue of Breakthrough Marketing Secrets and um, I'm gonna share with you what I think is a, a rather big breakthrough uh, marketing secret. So four, four quadrants of consumer desire. As you can see, uh, like any good, four quadrant model, I've drawn four quadrants, right? And I'm going to label this uh, in line with, so actually, uh, let's see, I, it, we, it's. So um, this is a we, not a me. Um, so this actually comes out of a, I don't know, a philosopher, a writer, uh, Ken Wilber, his his model, his four quadrant model that looks at the, um, let's see, this is the individual, this is the group, this is the subjective, and this is the objective. So um, what is that? So this is the inner experience, right? The inner experience of me, the inner experience of we. This is the outer experience, the outer experience of like the physical body, it, and the outer experience of physical things moving around in relation to each other in the world. And, um, and this, is a, this is the individual level, individual interior, individual exterior. This is the group or collective level, group exterior, group interior, right? And so everything kind of, all of reality can be looked at from these different perspectives. There's the inside of me, there's the outside of me, there's the inside of like the subjective experience of relationships, and then there's the objective physical um, experience of us relating in the world. So that's like city states, etc. So uh, what does this have to do with consumer desire? Well, three of the really big categories of consumer desire really are, are recognized as health, wealth, and relationships. So you can just use that as a shortcut, health, wealth, relationships, right? Health, wealth, relationships, because those are, um, you know, if you look at almost any kind of consumer desire, you can usually fit that under health, wealth, or relationships. So even something like, like a car, right? A car, somebody could buy that because they believe, hey, um, I'm, you know, I'm going to get looked at by members of the opposite sex and I'm going to get attention for this car. Or they might buy it because this is a safe car for my family. Or they might buy it because, hey, I feel really good when I drive this car. Or they may, may buy it because it's a good investment. And that can actually fall under these like different categories of, of uh, consumer desire because is it about the internal experience? Is it about what other people will think of me? Is it about taking care of myself, my physical body? Is it about showing off my, my, my financial status or, um, or protecting my fa financial status by it being a, a, a smart purchase decision? And so there's all these different ways that you can look at any given purchase. And it's gonna fit under health, wealth, and relationships, but it can also fit under those different things. So when I think about I, so if something is, um, so this is uh, like subjective health. So this is, um, let's say, 
head, heart, and soul or spirit. So when we think about the, the individual uh, internal experience of health, that is like how healthy are you mentally? How healthy are you emotionally? How healthy are you spiritually? And if, um, if you're feeling like you either need some development there, you need some, you need some healing there, um, you need some growth there. Like if, if you're looking for that, that actually, uh, like that drives your purchase decisions. So for example, like I will buy specific audiobooks because I want to, uh, I, I want to practice meditation. Well, that's this internal subjective experience, right? Um, that's that's my individual subjective experience. Or I want to manage like some emotional stuff going on inside me. That's again that fits under this quadrant. Now um, on on the individual level, it's pretty much always about health. But in this case, we're talking about the external body like the, the, the health of our physical body. So there is there are huge, huge industries around this. Of course, there's the whole medical field, right? We, uh, there's, there's the whole medical and healthcare field. There is, there's weight loss, there's fitness, there's, um, there's, there's diet. All the food that we eat is related to the sustenance of our, of our physical organism, right? And so there are tremendous desires, both in terms of healing and in terms of like growth or optimization there under the, uh, the physical health. Now we get down here and it gets maybe a little bit more complicated. So um, down under the we subjective experience, like under the, the, uh, the, the group subjective experience, this is going to be something that I have called relational effectiveness. And effectiveness is a really important term here because effectiveness is like the ability to get your desired outcome. And at first I was going to use the word power here. At first I was going to talk about, oh, relational power. And when we get over here, I was going to mention like economic power, but power doesn't seem like quite the right word. The word that I was going for was something that like, like power can have a, a negative connotation that, I, that is not necessarily what we want here. We, uh, if somebody is very relationally effective, that means they, um, you know, they are able to fulfill their role as, as a parent, as a sibling, as a, as a child, as a member of the family, as a member of, um, of maybe uh, social groups, as a member of their community. They're, they're able to fulfill these different roles if, um, if they have the desire to start a relationship, whether that's related to, to a personal thing or related to a, like a professional thing. It, they're like somebody who is effective at that is somebody who's considered like, like very, very healthy, you know, and, and actually as you go out further anywhere in these quadrants, um, as you grow in any of these quadrants, that would generally be considered uh, healthy, but on the, in the external, because we're dealing with other people, it's about the, our effectiveness at being able to um, connect with other people in a way that gets what we want. Not necessarily in a way that's like win-lose, but win-win, right? And so there's relational effectiveness here. And then we have this last quadrant. And that's socioeconomic effectiveness. So that's a little bit different because this is like this quadrant is where money has meaning. This quadrant is where trade and business has meaning. And this is so wealth usually fits under this quadrant, although we can grow wealth for lots of different reasons. We can grow wealth because we want to uh, feel good about ourselves and our capability in the world. We can grow wealth because we need it to 
sustain and protect our physical health, our organism. We can grow wealth um, because of how it lets us, let's say, um, live out our morals of creating a positive impact in our community and supporting organizations we care for. But the the act of like growing wealth through creating a business, through um, through connecting in your community, through through that um, would typically fit under here. But the socioeconomic effectiveness is about way more than that because like creating a better community, creating a better group um, experience is not necessarily just about having money, although money is can be one way to be effective and to to have that like that form of power, right? But it can also be the ability to um, to organize groups of people to achieve certain outcomes in the world. It can be the ability to set up structures um, such as like government is a socioeconomic effectiveness situation. So uh, being able to create a government that that um, that creates a, a situation for the, the populace to thrive. That's all about socioeconomic effectiveness. And so when you think about this, um, you think like, okay, so why is my why is my audience doing this? Uh, why is my why is my market interested in in one particular product or service? There's typically going to be one major driver for like your core target audience member, your 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 uh, prototypical consumer, the person who is like if you imagine somebody in your head, this person is your main buyer. They're probably going to have one main motivation. And so, for example. Uh, let's say, let's say we're selling a fitness product to somebody who is uh, who's like a fitness product to middle-aged dads, right? Uh, you know, late thirties, forties, fifties. A fitness product to fit in that area. So, what am I going to think about there? So there can be there can be lots of different motivations, right? Uh, there can be the the actual like desire to stay healthy, the the desire to um, to cure a specific issue, so they may feel like they're overweight and out of shape and unable to move through the world. But then, what does that mean? Like, are they buying because they're interested in the health of their physical body, or are they buying because I don't know, maybe they're not as sexy to their partner anymore, or? Are they buying because now that now that they have kids and like they're realizing that okay they, they have to catch their breath just going up the steps and their their dad died of a heart attack at a at a relatively young age and they want to be around to be a an ongoing like positive presence in their family's lives well suddenly you move from this like external body thing to this relational effectiveness thing are is is getting a better body making them a better dad or is getting a better body making them more capable it could be that they know with certain fitness they're going to be able to to show up in the world in a way that allows them to uh, maybe build the wealth build the business create a positive impact that they want so if you were focusing the same thing on um, fitness for entrepreneurs, it may be about having all the, the strength, stamina, and energy to be able to build your business, to build your wealth. So you have to think about these different things. So where is my market and what is their motivation? Is their motivation because um, something is, is going on subjectively either in themselves or outside of themselves uh, in terms of interacting with other people and is it, or is it something objective? Like, are they just looking to stack cash? Maybe they are. Like if their motivation, if my motivation is is just to have nice things around me, well, I may want to build a successful business because I want like socioeconomic effectiveness, just the ability to stack cash, right? Or that may mean something completely different. Let's say I'm I'm like a, 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 a spiritually mission-driven, Entrepreneur, and my a priority in my life is um, is is to be part of my church and to con- contribute to my church and contribute to the mission work that we do. Well, that may actually be 
down here. And so you have to think about this, like what is the focus of my target market and how does it fit with all that? So I, I do want to, there's this classic list from uh, John Caples and I've, I've talked about it before. It's out of Tested Advertising Methods by John Caples. And he has this list of, of these universal appeals that continue to increase sales. And so make more money, save money, make more money, save money. Those kind of will default down to this quadrant. But again, they, they can manifest in different places. They can manifest in different ways. And so you have to ask, like, do my people want to make more money or save more money because of that? Or is it for something else? Is it because they want to be able to pass on a legacy like generational wealth, retirement security? That, um, I would argue in a lot of cases, is actually um, as much about this, it's about this. We save up so that we have the capability to take care of ourselves. Um, it can also influence our relational effectiveness because we don't necessarily want to be a burden to, um, to society or to members of our family that would have to take care of ourselves. What about better health now? Better health now is often, again, up here, but it can be lots of different places. Uh, healthcare, security, security in old age, advance in profession or trade, often down here. Prestige. Um, prestige is, is an interesting motivator because um, prestige often appears externally as the socioeconomic effectiveness. But most often, the reason that we want prestige is not because we necessarily like want the capability to influence the world and to create these these systems and structures and and social structures that um, that create businesses and whatever. If somebody wants prestige, if that's their real driver, what they're really going for is this. They're really going for, hey, everybody looks up to me because I have whatever stuff or I have whatever position or I have whatever. And so it's it is about how people perceive them um, socially um, and relationally especially, that drives the prestige. Enjoyment. Enjoyment is a really powerful motivator. And as I was thinking about this, I was thinking, well, where does that fit? But clearly, it fits here. It fits head, heart, and soul. Enjoyment is about, like, if your product, let's say your product is um, is an experience. It's it's like an, an adventure experience, or you're selling, uh, you're, you're selling your Airbnb, or you're selling whatever it is, right? Enjoyment is about, hey, I'm going to go and I'm going to feel good and I'm going to have this positive experience here, this positive subjective experience about whatever this is. Or like, hey, I, I buy, at this point, like I buy music software. I, I Okay, so this is a great, I, like I used to be into DJing and, and, uh, and making music and stuff and I still am to some degree. But it used to be that I, I had dreams of becoming like this, this, this uh, superstar DJ, right? I would go and I'd see folks like John Dickweed and, and Paul Oakenfold and Sasha and like uh, these big world famous DJs perform. And I know a lot of those people will feel really old at this point. But, you know, when I was coming up in that world, that's, that's who I was excited about. And so um, I... At first, I was doing it with dreams of becoming this like this this world famous DJ and like uh, you know getting rich there and possibly getting all the attention from um, from being a DJ, and that was all exciting to me at that time. But at this point, when I do music, when I do DJing, when I do any of that stuff, it's all about this. It's all about feeding my soul, uh, feeding my heart, feeling good enjoying the process of music creation. And so enjoyment can, can like, it can move around, right? Uh, or, or where you are being motivated, where consumers are being driven in terms of their desires can move around a lot based on that. Easier chores. Well, um, that, can, that can definitely fall under just the physical, um, the physical uh, taxation of doing a particular chore, doing a particular task. That takes something out of you physically. It takes physical energy, so it may fall under here. But also, just getting your chores done, 
you may look like super dad, super mom, whatever, because you, you cleaned up the house. And if something made that easy, that's great. Gain more leisure. Um, you know, that can, that can go under lots of different things. Comfort, reduce fat, freedom from worry. Like these are presented as universal appeals and arguably they all fall under health, wealth and relationships. And there is a deep driver. There's usually a deep driver that falls under one of these categories, right? There's the, there's the internal individual experience, the external individual factors, the uh, internal social or, or, or group experience and the external social group experience. And the main driver is going to fall under those, but then there's going to be secondary drivers. Um, so for example, just going back to like the, the, the fitness for entrepreneurs thing, right? The fitness for entrepreneurs thing might be specifically, you may find if you were to do let's say a little bit of ad testing, a little bit of headline testing to figure out what messages people started to respond to the most, you might actually find that, hey, having that health and vitality and energy that requires you to show up and like work hard to grow your business every day because that's what you do and you're driven to be a great entrepreneur and you know that your health is important so that you can, um, so that you can fulfill your vision of entrepreneurship in the world. And you may actually find that that's the main driver, but then there's going to be benefits with the health uh, of your physical body. Of course, if, if you're helping somebody with their physical body's health, even if that's not their main driver, their main consumer desire, the main reason they're buying something, it can be a secondary reason. Yeah, it's great to have a, have a physical body where I feel very capable of doing whatever I need to do in it. Oh, and hey, uh, you know, people, respect the fact that I take care of my body. They, they um, admire me for taking care of my fitness. And, um, and you know, my, my partner really is uh, more into me because I have taken care of my fitness, right? So there's, there can be this other benefit there. And even just this, hey, I feel good about myself because I've prioritized, uh, prioritized my physical health. And, so there can be all sorts of overlapping desires in all of these quadrants. But what you'll usually find is that somebody is driven by a desire. Your prototypical customer, your archetypical, uh, archetypal customer, I suppose that's the, the, the right word there. Your archetypal customer is driven by one of these uh, quadrants by by desires that manifest in one of these quadrants and those desires so if if the desire is to if we start in the middle and that's like that's like um, n not healthy not not physically capable not not effective whatever if we start there they may feel deficient in one particular area and that means that they feel like they're too close to the middle and they need to move out from the middle. So if you if you feel generally healthy, but you want to be more healthy, that's not what I'm talking about. If you if if you feel unhealthy and you want to be healed, that's what moving out from the middle is. Hey, I feel ineffective um, socioeconomically, and I want to move out from the middle. That kind of um, healing versus versus preventative stuff tends to be a very strong driver. So if somebody feels unhealthy, they're going to go buy things to get healthy again. If somebody feels like broken in inside, they're going to go do things. They're going to buy things to feel to to get mentally healthy, um, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy. Again, if somebody feels incapable of having good relationships, they're going to try and figure that out. And so this, this healing is coming from the middle. But then there's also growing to the outsides. And really, um, going back to the original model for this, Ken Wilber, um, the, the way that he actually taught all of this, there's all sorts of lines going out in all different directions that represent all the different types of growth. And, um, and we're all growing in and shifting in constant ways. And, and sometimes we may have, like, for example, we may have some great 
uh, you know, spiritual experience. But that's not necessarily where we rest. And so there's like levels and all this crazy stuff, right? Um, and his books, his collected works are thousands of pages. If you really wanted to understand this stuff on a, on a deep, deep level from like the psychology, not the business and consumer desire perspective. But from the business and consumer desire perspective, if you just think about how my product or service is helping someone achieve whatever outcome, whether that's healing or growth in one of these different areas, and maybe test a few messages and figure out what is the primary driver of their uh, of their consumer behavior, their buyer behavior. What are they like most into in terms of the messaging that you put in front of them? And if you do that and you really start to understand your market from this perspective, and then you look at how the secondary things can contribute to the, the core desire that you speak to, you can really start to get a, a, a completely integrated model of how your product, your service, your offer is helping your customer, your, your consumer fulfill their own, uh, their own desire in your marketplace. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, again, like I love this whole going crazy on the whiteboard thing uh, because I don't know, it's just kind of fun to do. I always aim to uh, deliver as much value as possible through these videos. And I'd love it if you'd leave a comment below. Let me know on a scale of one to 10 how valuable you found this and why. What's your takeaway? What's your insight? What's your action item? What's your breakthrough? Also, tap that like button before you go so you get more content like this delivered to you and so the magical algorithms of the internet will know to share it with people like you who will find it valuable. You can certainly share it with folks directly and subscribe before you go. Subscribe here. And if you really want to go deep on marketing that gets results, subscribe at BreakthroughMarketingSecrets.com. Get my daily emails Monday through Friday, including these videos and more exclusive content. Again, my name is Roy Fur for Breakthrough Marketing Secrets. I always aim for that 10 out of 10 value. I hope that I've delivered it here and I look forward to seeing you again in your next video issue. I'll see you soon. Bye.